that's not going to work. Hello. Trying to get my uh, connection better because it is not going to stream very well. Yep, I see buffering. Trying to fix it. is not good. I may have to do this as a short. I wanted to do it as a live. Oh, that's coming up a little. I'm actually using my other phone as a hot spot. Table, I won't be able to writing because my other phone's being a hot spot. That's still not working. Yeah, we're gonna make uh, we're gonna make the ear horn. Um, still trying to figure out how to get this buffer to not or this stream not to buffer. Well, I'm seeing some really bad kilobits per second here. It's pretty uh, it's pretty low. I'm only showing 400. And Give me a minute. Let me see what I can do. Wow, that is so bad. Well, the problem, part of the problem is, is this hill. That's blocking some of my reception. But it's where we have a table. so bad.
there we go. 2200 kilobits per second. That works. Well, I should be able to stream like that. No, I'm not going to auction my tools. This is going to be a uh, assembly video and deassembly of the Warrior 12 volt drill. Sorry, I kicked it. So, part number is 57366 from Warrior. Um, the horn that we're going to be using is um, basically you just want to go on, on Amazon or eBay and look for a horn that looks like this. There's a whole bunch of manufacturers all branded under different names. Uh, they all appear to be the exact same uh, horn. Uh, so you're just looking for one that looks like this in the picture, has this support here. That's the style that we're using. So that's what you, that's what you want to get. Um, these are the tools that I'm going to use. I don't feel that all of them are necessary, but I'm going to do it a little bit quicker uh, by using these. You, the one I made for the lady over at 1776, I only use this. So, and a screwdriver. So, you know, I'm just trying to make mine look super clean. So, let me see about getting you guys set up someplace where you guys can kind of see the action best. Uh, probably put you across the table from me. That should work. Well, you guys asked for this content, so I'm giving you exactly what you asked for. You know, you guys wanted to see how to uh, to do this and make one of these drills, and I'm going to do that for you. And then, uh, yeah. So, welcome along for the ride, and uh, let the fun begin. Okay. Take this microphone off me. Put it up here on the table. Hi, everybody. I don't have a phone, so I won't be able to respond to, to questions because unfortunately, I'm using my other phone as a uh, as a hotspot, and it's over in the middle of the parking lot. So this is not going to be an interactive uh, video, well, live. So I apologize for that. But unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of table space that I could use and uh, not be under, or have something, uh, have, if it started raining, have some protection from the elements. So we're gonna do the best that we can with what we got. All right, so this is the Warrior 12 volt drill in its uh, properly functioning section. Okay, first tip is you're gonna to wanna to have the drill with it this way. Cause this is the way that the, the direction switch needs to be to power the air motor correctly. We're gonna be taking this switch out. So we're not gonna have really a chance to bump it, but you're gonna to wanna to try to make sure that this switch is over to this direction. So it's pushed in on this side. So I guess uh, let's start taking it apart. We've checked functionality, it works. And uh, we're gonna just start unscrewing this thing. Okay, there's only really two screws that are different in this one, and that's these back two, they're longer. So it's pretty pretty easy to remember that the two long screws go in the back of the chassis.
All right. So you would think I took all the screws out, and I can take these four out here too, and you should be able to split the case. Problem is, is that underneath this trim ring, there's two more screws you can't get off unless you take the chuck off. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can do it the easy way, which is basically you take a screwdriver or something and you break this piece of plastic and it'll expose two more screws that are underneath it. Um, but then you lose the ability to put this, this plastic trim piece back on. So it's really the amount of effort that you wanna put in. Um, it's quicker to just break this plastic ring off. Um, I'm not gonna do it that way. I think it looks cleaner with it intact. So I'm gonna show you the the way to do it the long way. Uh, then you can choose either way that you wanna do it um, and go from there. So like I said, at this point, all the screws are out that you can visually see. You could take a screwdriver, I'm just gonna use my knife for example because I don't have a flathead with me, I don't need it for this job. And you could pry up here and break, you know, crack it here, flip it around, you know, crack it there, and then this piece would come off, and which would expose two more screws, one here and one there, and then you can disassemble the body. So that's option one. Option two is you gotta take apart this whole front this whole front chuck. Now, I'm gonna use the fact that I have tools to do this, but you could go in here with a screwdriver. There's a screw inside there, and you put the screwdriver on there. Well, we'll try, we'll try it with the screwdriver. We'll see what happens. All right, here's the key. This screw is reverse thread, so it's not righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. It's lefty-tighty, righty-loosey. So, unlike your normal screws, you're gonna to try to turn it the wrong way. And that puppy is tight. So, I'm gonna use the, uh, the impact. And I'm gonna take that screw out. So, like I said, it was going the way you normally would tighten things. So it's a reverse thread. Then you take this chuck and come on. There's some tension on there. There we go. Then that goes the opposite way and it unthreads off of there. Okay. For some people that don't have an impact, it may be simpler just to snap the ring. Because like I said, if you if you don't have an impact to sit here and pull that screw out. Repla taking this chuck off could be a real pain. Um, we're gonna change out from a Phillips two to a Phillips one. We're gonna take out these four screws here. And basically, really? I did that to you online. Oh, okay. <laughs> basically this screw and these four screws I'm about to take out here Oh, they can't see your face, so they can see what I did. Um, they're gonna, they're basically gonna be leftover screws. We won't need those to finish the project. And Nicole came up and get and kind of gave me a wet willy, but she didn't get in my ear. So no, I don't like going all the way in. Ugh, might get a fingernail full of wax or something. Yeah. All right, and as you can see, as I'm starting to unscrew this, there's a spring back here, so it's going to kind of boing apart. There we go. All right. So we've got a couple of parts. We've got a spring, we've got a washer. Just set those off to the side. We won't, won't, we will not be using those. And then this is where that that trim piece comes off. So like I said, you can either break this off 
and then not have to go through that procedure. But the goal is, is you have to get to these two screws. So you can pretty much choose which way that you want to do that. Um, I like saving the trim ring because I think it makes the, the horn look a little bit more like, it, like somebody bought it that way. And just like that, it comes apart. If you try taking it apart before you take that ring off, you'll be like, why isn't it coming apart? And well, it's because there's too much screw still holding it together. All right, we're gonna remove this because of the fact that this hole here is what we're gonna use to put the, to stick the motor in. So we don't need that there. We're gonna pull this drill motor out and cut the two wires. Okay, so again, another part we're not gonna be using in this. So this is the, the, this is basically what you need. I'm gonna take this out real quick. This here, you just wanna make sure it's all the way that direction, okay? <coughs> Excuse me, I'm not gonna put this back in. There's no reason to have it in there. This is a pretty, uh, hard switch to, to just accidentally bump over. So, you know, it's just better to just leave it like that. So, all right. So this is where we get to the uh, building of this thing. Um, we can strip these two wires while we're here. Cut a little bit back because there's a little bit of solder still in the wire. I want to be able to fan it out when I connect it to the other wire. Oh, this one's good. Okay. So, next step, I'm going to put this drill back together so I can sit here and drill up the back hole. Take our two long screws, which are these two. Now we got it back together. And that concludes how to make an air drill. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm gonna do a small pilot hole before I go to the uh, Big Bertha. I'm gonna give you a really big hole drill. And um, we're gonna sit here and line some stuff up. That is the dinner bell. That means I'm gonna miss dinner again. Oh well. I'm getting used to it. You don't have to have a specific size in mind, just a smaller drill bit, just to start out your pilot hole is all that I'm trying to accomplish here. You don't have, we don't have to be specific on exactly uh, which uh, drill size we use at least at this portion. Uh, 
nice thing about doing this is you kind of got you got a center line and then you know you can kind of figure out where the center would be to the two pieces so there's really not a lot of measuring here just kind of eyeball it that looks pretty good to me you're cutting into plastic so it goes pretty easy I'm gonna step it up one more step just to uh, just before I sit here and I go with the uh, I'm gonna ream you a new hole drill bit uh, we'll go up to this one Dugga dugga. Uh -huh. Talking to me? I'm go yeah. I'm in the middle of doing a live. Well, I was gonna offer to make you a plate. I just don't know if you need everything they on don't, your tacos. They don't want to watch me. Uh, I actually do. I'll come over. I should be done in a little bit. Okay. You know, I'll just maybe have to nuke it a little. All right. So this is what's called a step bit. Okay. Basically, you can continue to drill, and each one of these steps is a different size. Uh, the last one I did uh, was I drilled it up to seven eighths. It was a little sloppy. I'm gonna I'm gonna refit it at uh, thirteen sixteenths. Eh, actually, I may try uh, eleven sixteenths, and then we'll see. And if we got to go up to thirteen sixteenths, we will. So I'm gonna step it up to this step right here. There's actually uh, markings on the inside here that tells me what each step is. So we're gonna go up to here, which is uh, one two. Well, I guess we count that too. Yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Alright, so. the plastic shavings <sighs> all right so let's take it back apart if you've got the hand strength you really don't have to screw it back together but you know not everybody's gonna have the hand strength that I have to hold the case together while you're drilling it so be a little bit more of a process having to take it apart and put it back together so I did something a little different. I found a company that offered the horn, well, a little different. I figured I might want mine to be a little bit more unique than others. So let's see. I'll probably regret it because it'll probably get scratched and then it'll be like, well, what is the point of it? But for right now, mine's not going to be the same as everybody else's. Here's our drill motor, or our air, air compressor motor. Anybody notice anything a little different about mine? Then, um, yeah, I'm doing mine in black. So, haha, you guys can have chrome ones. The diaphragm here screws off the back of the horn. That's how we can assemble it. 
so. So where you guys all have chrome horns, I'm gonna have a nice black one. Cost me about uh, $5 more for this black horn. So, there we go. Now we take this back apart. Um, actually, put it back together. Forgetting steps. All right, so this ring fits inside here. Um, careful how much you trim off of this because it'll kind of wedge into this per almost perfectly. And you almost have to use no glue. Um, nip the standoff. You can use a file, you can use sandpaper. I've got a right angle uh, grinder. So I'm gonna choose to use that for speed because you guys are impatient. So if I say it took 10 minutes to do this, uh, sanding this, you guys probably wouldn't stay tuned. Test fit this. Eric, I got your next video. You got my next video. I'll show people how to live stream how to open a coconut for <laughs> shit soup bottom. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's two shovels or machete. <laughs> okay. Or a sawzall. Or a sawzall, okay. What's the hole, huh? uh, I don't know. Alright, so we've got our plastic ring here. And uh, this one seems to be a little bit smaller in diameter than the chrome one, which, uh, yeah, I guess I will have to glue this one in. So unfortunately, this one's gonna have to get glued in too. But the reason we did that was because we needed to be able to figure out how deep we need to go with this. Because it's basically our depth gauge. And as you guys can see, I've got to go bigger with the hole. You do know you can paint it. So. You do that, right? You're just showing them how to do it. Yeah, I'm showing them how to do it. I don't want to build them. I want them to build them and then give me credit for showing them how to build them. And that's it. All right, so we're going to drill this out another, another hole bigger. And then we'll test fit again and see how it goes. So this time I'm not going to put screws back in it. I'm just going to hold the case together while drilling it. I've got the hand strength. If you don't, you know, feel free to to uh, screw it in. Get back here. All right, I'll get you later. All right. what step that's up to that is up to there's not three quarters all right Okay, so this is up to 13 sixteenths is the hole that I drilled. And hopefully that'll be the perfect size. Take a little bit of, well, I'll do some cleanup work after. All right, let's see how this fits. And I guess we gotta do a little bit of cleanup work. There's a little bit of debris inside the case.
Oh, is that not, is that not just perfect right there? It's gonna grab that just, just perfectly. That's, that's how I wanted this to be. That's great. That is awesome. All right. Uh, let's do a little bit of cleanup on here. I'm just cleaning up some of the plastic that melted during the drilling process and kind of is just debris. Just so it doesn't interfere, cause problems. Nothing too major. See if it sandwiches together good. Look! Look at that. Looks like it was manufactured to be that way. Is that Agnes' horn? Uh, no, hers has already been built. No. This, this is my special horn because I got mine in black. Everybody else has gotten them in chrome. I didn't see one up close. I tried uh, crossing paths with Wyckoff in Southern Georgia yesterday last night, but he went black. Uh, and, I, yeah. and I told him I could probably meet you by exit three or so, and then his signal mm. went off. So. Yeah. Now I'm gonna see here, and I'm gonna put a uh, rubber O-ring on this horn, so just so it has a little bit more something to grab, because there's these two supports here in the back that'll pinch the the rubber O-ring, kind of hold it in there a little tighter. back just a little and there we go and there you go so that part of it's done I, I think with the, how good the hole was drilled it's optional if you want to put the rubber o-ring in uh, I'm just choosing to uh, on the uh, on the one that I made for the lady uh, over at 1776 I didn't even use a drill I literally sat and took a high leverage side cutters and I just cut a triangle to, to basically cut a spot for the horn to come through and it worked just fine so you don't have to have that drill you don't have to have that drill bit I'm just trying to make this as clean of a install or setup as I can. So that's just my, what I'm choosing to do. I mean, I basically did hers with a Phillips screwdriver and a side cutters, you know, so it can be done that way. Uh, these wires aren't long enough to reach out to the body. So we're gonna, we're gonna extend them a little bit. I'm using uh, some speaker wire uh, you could just use red and black if you get red and black. I just like the fact that they're kind of together. Um, you could use black and black if you just want to have a black uh, black view. Um, just keep track of which one's power and which one's ground. Actually, that would be kind of cool. Should I go get some black wire? This is my personal one. You guys would just have to give me a second to go get some black wire. I think I'm going to do that. We're going to make mine all black. See how you guys are doing on the stream. Oh, 2,500 kilobits per second. It's all good. All right, guys. I'm going to run uh, over, get some black wire, and I'll be right back.
unfortunately I don't have any black wire, so I guess that's the, uh, that's how it usually goes when you're sitting here trying to do something on live, you know, and then change your mind. Uh, so we're just going to have to do it with this, and then at some point, I'll uh, just, if I decide to do that, I'll take it back apart, and I can easily re-solder two wires. Not the end of the world here. Not the end of the world. There we go. It's really weird how these pumps, each pump, this uh, this outlet tends to be different uh, on the last one I built the outlet was up here with with this foot on the bottom this one it's on the bottom it's kind of funny how they they can't seem to uniform that every manufacturer or every reseller has that pump a little differently uh, located Again, this is something I'm going to do uh, just because I have the supplies with me. You can easily cut, uh, strip the wires a little bit longer so that there's more metal exposed and you could, uh, you could just twist them and electrical tape them. I'm going to solder them just because that's what I like to do and I have the equipment to do it. Again, I'm going to use shrink tape or shrink tubing instead of using uh, electrical tape because I have it. In a pinch, if I needed to, there would be nothing wrong with doing electrical tape. Uh, the first one that I built uh, for the lady over at 1776, I did use electrical tape and we did just twist the wires together and it works just fine. So. all in what your comfort level is and what you have available. Electrical tape is cheap. Cheap and easy. Gotta make them a little bit longer. You might think this is a fancy wire stripper. They sell them over at Harbor Freight. They're not that expensive. They're actually kind of cool. I like them. I like them better than the old style stripper. There's a time and place for those though. I decided to tie it this way or twist it this way because then when I'm done soldering it and I put the shrink tubing over it's going to be a lot cleaner solder joint you could have just taken the wires and twisted them together and then taped them and bent them over and taped them down or soldered them that way too just my personal preference
I actually got this out in California. I had to help somebody uh, pick up a connector for their uh, their handheld radio, and we went to an electronic supply store, and they had this uh, soldering iron, and I'd never seen one uh, this large uh, that was rated for the kind of output that this does. Uh, it's actually an ECG J1000. Actually, it's pretty impressive. Okay, so that one's done. Now I'm gonna pre-twist these this way so that way when I put them together and I go to twist them back they're they'll they won't try to come apart so. I twist them the other way to get them to go See, everything's happy-go-lucky. up to where our repair was. Nice thing about the siren is it puts on enough heat that it will melt the shrink tubing. You can use a lighter or uh, something else that generates heat. But that works pretty good. So now we've got the extended wires. I'm going to use this hole here that's on the side of the case to sneak the wires out of because I don't think we need to keep the fan cool anymore. Seeing how it's over here. Um, in the chassis, grab the case, place it in the chassis. There you go. Put 
put a couple screws in here just to hold everything tight while we do the next stage. Are you guys starting to get why I don't want to build these on the regular? I mean, it's a fun little project when you do it once. It's fun to, uh, to have. It's fun to be able to say you got something that you made yourself. Um, but, I mean, to mass produce these, I don't think that would be too fun. And I've still got a couple more I gotta build. Unfortunately, because I'm just too nice. Will you make me one? Sure. Now, during final assembly, before I would uh, fully assemble it, I'll put this trim ring back on, so that way it'll cover up all this. Uh, right now, I know I'm going to be taking it back apart, so it's not it's not crucial that I have it on the horn. Because now I've got to make the uh, air compressor fit on this. Alright, so when we took this orange plug out of here, this would have been maybe on a better model that had like a 1-2 speed transmission on there. This would have been your 1-2 switch. But it's a really nice spot to sit here and stick this the top of this motor in but it's not big enough. So we're gonna get our little soldering iron back out. There we go. We're gonna use it to liberate some plastic so that this will fit. I tried it with a, I've got a, a, a die, a, a, uh, Dremel. I have a Dremel. I didn't really have the control. Um, it did make quick work of it, but I'm not sure. Maybe I'll do a little. Maybe I'll do a little both. I'll do a little Dremel and I'll finish her off with the uh, with the siren. That's what we'll do. Because the Dremel does do a, a good job of removing material. It just there wasn't enough control. It seemed like it was a little sloppier when I was done. So let's uh, let's do some Dremel time. It's time to get the siren iron out. Remember, this is that environmentally uh, friendly plastic that's good for the environment when it burns.
front's almost there. Front's there, now I gotta work on the back. Nice thing about the solder iron is, I, is I'm just moving material around, I'm re, relocating it. So if I had to, I could uh, push some of the plastic back if, if the hole gets too loose or whatever. Where with the Dremel, once it's gone, it's gone. Wow, that's really close. This one's got a cap over the top to kind of make it look prettier. So where I normally put it, it's interfering. So we're gonna make we're gonna make some slight modifications of this one, just uh, so that beautification cap can clear. So this one's gonna go back a little further than most of the chrome ones. There we go. Oh, look at that. Tell me that's not perfect. And I don't even have zip ties on it yet. That's perfect. All right, let's uh, sit there and clean up some of this plastic so it looks a little nicer. Some of the over residue. think anybody's gonna be looking at this this close but you know I just I like doing quality <laughs> so that'll be a nice quality look at that that is so nice it's gonna work perfectly look at that. all right so now we need some zip ties we're getting to the end of the build um, we've got to solder the wires on. I got to zip tie this motor to the uh, chassis, hook up an airline, and put a battery on it. And we're we're pretty much almost all the way done. You know, just takes a little time and patience. What's up, buddy? Not much. Just uh... you, you like how I made the stealth horn? No, the all black. Yeah. I paid a little extra to make it black. Uh, Dennis, the mayor, decided to stop by. G give me the government approval on this one. I, I like it. You oh, like that it? last one was pretty loud. This one will be just as loud. It's the same horn. It's just black. Just black. Just stealthy. Just stealthier. Exact same horn. Just black. So these all extra parts. Those are parts that you'd use if you were doing it in a car install, but because I'm not doing it in a car install, I don't need them. It's a fancy relay. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice relay. So, yeah. Well, I'll let you know that. 
Oh, looks I don't good. It looks good. The last I, one was awesome. I don't mind I mean, if when, you're here. When you, when you pointed it last one at me, and I recorded that video, when I, I played it back, if you watch, you just my, my, oh, my screen warps. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, and the whole screen I hope you don't around. mind, but I stole that video and I posted it as a short. Oh, absolutely. No, absolutely. Please. It was just, you know, I was like, that's cool. Because <laughs> you, you even jumped during the video. I was like, you did not expect it to be that loud. No, it was loud. Yes. And watch this, watch the screen, and uh, you'll see the screen actually works. MJR Farms is sitting here trying to tell me, oh, they sell something like that over at Walmart for like $14. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no, they don't. No, no, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't. <laughs> they may sell something that's similar, but it's not going to put out the noise that it's this does. It's not like this. No, it's not not like this. Oh yeah, I got to put my trim ring on. I forgot. Starting to get too much stuff on the table. I gotta disassemble it one more time because I want to put the trim ring on. Forgot about it. Which actually is gonna take a little bit away from the blackness, but that's okay. It'll be fine. Maybe at some point I'll just take it back apart and I'll paint that black. I don't have any black paint right now. But I think it makes it makes the front of it look a little nicer. I missed dinner for you guys. Hopefully they didn't eat it all. All right, so we'll take this apart one last time because this will be the this will be the last time it comes apart, at least for now. All that just to put that on. And I'm gonna have to put some type of glue or something. Uh, on this one, this ring was smaller in diameter than the, than the one that the chrome horns came with. So it does have a little bit of play. May have to glue a zip tie in there or something. I'll just glue it to the one side of the case so I can still open the case if I need to. Because um, if I glue it all the way around, you won't be able to open the case. So. I mean, I just think that ring makes it have like a finished look, you know, I don't know. Probably doesn't matter, but I kind of like it. So.
one of the guys on TikTok that repairs computers always says, screw, 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 screw. Hello. Hey. Hi, Life of Tammy. You want to come drop in on my uh, my thing? They can only really see the table. That looks really good. Yeah, I did mine custom. Uh, by the way, guest shout out to Life of Tammy is here, and I, I don't think they can see her face. <laughs> you know. Wow. Yeah. So I did mine uh, stealthy black. That is cool. Yeah. Well, I figured I'll make it easier to find in a crowd. You know, if everybody's got the chrome ones, because it costs $5 more, oh, wow. not a lot of people are going to pay to do the stealthy black. Yeah. Maybe they'll try rattle panning black it, but <laughs> whenever you try to paint over chrome, it doesn't usually work that well. So, yeah, some guy walked in here and just dropped a coconut in front of my, my live stream. And, That's cool. <laughs> but then I guess he was in a hurry because he wasn't willing to wait the time for me to finish this. Trying not to make this be that long of a video, but I did walk away and try to get some black wire because I was like, you know, that would have been cool because I could have done just two black wires and just yeah. would have had to know which one was positive. Oh, uh, right. And then it would have been all black, but <laughs> I didn't have any extra black wire. So, uh -oh. unfortunately. I'm going to have to rewatch your stream just yep. to see you build this thing. Yep. Cool, cool. So, there's my scope. No, it's the air compressor, but it looks like it's a scope, no, you know? You better watch out. That it's would a, be illegal. Yeah. Well, they, they, cool. somebody there and said it looks like a blunderbuster, you know, the old time, uh, the old time guns that the, that the military used to use, yeah. blunderbusters. They said it looks like a blunderbuster. Oh, I'm like, wow. Yeah, I guess. So. I could put that thing on my car. Huh. Yeah. I will try not to forget to get something to eat. All right, I think that those zip ties are junk. It'd be cleaner if I would have had a lo one longer zip tie. That would have been awesome. All right, so through the trigger hole or the switch hole. That's also a nice thing is by removing that switch hole, it gave me the freedom to use that to help hold the motor down. So. Okay, and this is the this is the part of the of the job I hate doing because I gotta fish a zip tie through this top hole and over to the other top hole. I suppose I probably could have done it before I assembled it. I I, I don't know. I usually am pretty successful with it, so it doesn't usually take too long. But you know. There's probably, if you were mass producing them, there's probably an easier way to do this. I just kind of keep bending the zip tie until I get it to go through. Could probably split the case and stick a tool in there and kind of shift it around, but I don't know. It is what it is. And this is where the darkness comes in, where it's not handy then you can't really see the zip tie to know if you got to go up or down or what makes it a little bit harder to fish this through the hole
Well, I'll fumble with that off camera. You guys get the idea. Let me solder this up real quick. Show you how to do that. That's just an extra secure point for the for the motor anyways. I don't need to sit here and waste your guys' time watching me fumble a, a zip tie through a hole. You know, you guys could do it. There's other ways you could either, you could even sit here and go around the back. I don't, wouldn't like to do that. You know, possibly even fish it through like up here. But, you know, I can fight with that stuff on my own time. All right cheat and use this as a flashlight there's positive there's negative it's marked down the back of the motor which one's positive and which one's negative positive is red negative is black um, when I soldered these up I soldered I soldered silver off the red wire and I soldered negative off the uh, off the uh, copper looking wire so in my application this this one's positive like I said, every motor seems to be a little bit different. So, you know, check your motor. Don't just assume where I'm putting my wires is exactly where they go. I may have to, I think I'm gonna trim this down a little bit. That's, that's a little, little long for what I need. Let's see if we can't make this a little bit stealthier. I'll shorten these wires up just a little bit. Need to have a ton of wire just sitting there. That should be good. This is where the wire stripper, the automatic wire strippers have failed me. So I'm gonna go back to the old style. There we go. I'm gonna solder these wires on, so I'm just bending them in the holes so they don't move while I uh, while I get the soldering iron and everything ready. You could put uh, crimp on connectors and just slide it on. That's that's your choice. Again, I just I like I don't mind soldering. It uh, makes it so it doesn't seem to come apart as easy. But you could easily. Uh, get connectors like this that crimp onto the wire and uh, go that route. I personally just like soldering. melted plastic
I've had this so long, it's actually Radio Shack brand solder. Sucks when you can't like wipe something off your neck that's annoying you because you're sitting there trying to concentrate and do something else. I don't know if it was a bug or what the heck it was. There we go, that's good. Well, I heat this one up a little bit more. I wasn't happy with how it was. Siren sputtering for some reason. I, I don't know why. Getting a little inconsistent heat. Got to contact the manufacturer and see what they're. Came with like a spare uh, spare tube or something. That was supposed to be in case you got to clean it. Maybe I have to clean that uh, that gas tube. All right. So if I did everything right, uh, this this is a battery that's already charged. Uh, the compressor should make a noise. Shouldn't shouldn't honk because the diaphragm's not on there. Switch is right. <coughs> so yeah, she's pretty much ready for final assembly. Uh, we screw on our uh, on our diaphragm. This is where the magic happens. And then because it's still loose in the body, I can sit here and I can rotate her to line her up with the uh, the valve or with the uh, output from the air compressor. And then we basically take a take the hose, figure it out. I could take a little bit more off, but uh, if you're wearing headphones, this is your warning. Three, two, one, fire. Yeah, it's a little loud. Freedom! 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 So, that's how you make... Uh, horn drill i'm gonna probably take a little slack out of this so it's a little bit of a tighter thing finish putting that other that other zip tie around to grab the back side of the motor you know through the through the chassis just to hold it down but uh and then uh i suppose i'll show you this uh where is it uh zip tie i don't have this i'd have to do it on my lap but basically what you can do is you can take a pliers, you grab a pliers here, you take a flat edge screwdriver and you push against that and you can get these zip ties a little bit tighter. Um, so really that's that's about it guys. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you like uh, my black stealthy assault horn. 
Uh, yeah, it's a salt version horn. And uh, there, you know. Hopefully you like the design and now I'll come back behind the camera so I can sit here and see what you guys are saying. Hi guys. Okay. We need a meeting and then we can have a All right, well, I'm probably finishing up. I just wanted to see if anybody had any questions real quick because I'm done with the horn, obviously. Hello? Anybody there? 235 people and nobody wants to say hi. I put you all to sleep. The sound of my voice puts you guys all to sleep. Or my stream locked up and none of you guys have seen any of this. That would be sad. That'd be very sad. That'd be very, very sad. Hello? Is anybody out there? Hello? 